Hey guys, it's Chad from Sticks Blog. Today I want to do a follow-up video on my watch. Uh, it's the uh, Sunto Core. Um, around Christmas before last now, uh, 2012, I did an unboxing on this watch. That's when I got this watch. And since then I've had a number of emails uh, and just questions on that YouTube video. Um, just uh, other places. People asking me my thoughts on this watch. Um, like I said, I've had it now for a little over a year, and I figured it was time to go ahead and do that follow-up video. Also, to, uh, to be fair, one of the reasons I'm wanting to do it, um, I have a hard time with my camera here. I can't get too close to it or it won't focus. Um, but if you'll notice, up at the top of the screen there, there's a little lock right there, and then right above it, that is actually a low battery warning. So it's about time for me to change the battery on this thing. So I figured now would be a good time to kind of do a video on it. And while I'm at it, go ahead and put another battery in it and just kind of do that on video too. Uh, I will say I hope that it goes a little better than my last DIY type video because uh, anyway. Uh, so uh, just a few things about this watch beforehand. Um, this watch retails for $300. Uh, luckily, I found it on eBay for $160, I think, $140, $160, something like that. It was at a pretty heavy discount considering the price, um, which is you know part of the reason I was able to get it. $300 is a lot for me to shell out on a watch. Uh, the watch I had before this was a uh, High Gear Axio Max watch. Um, I liked it. It had a lot of the same functions as this watch. Um, there were a few things that was a little different about it that I liked, though. Um, one of them is, I, I can't remember 100% sure, but I, I'm wanting to say that on the Axio Max, uh, Max watch, you couldn't actually change the battery yourself. I think that there was a little more involved with it. I could be wrong on that. It's been a while. I can't remember. But I'm wanting to say that was one thing. Uh, however, uh, as far as functions, there are some things that I liked about this watch a little better than the Axio Max. Um, one thing is that I can lock the screen, as you can see. Um, you can see that little lock up at the top. Uh, and the way to do that, just to show you real quick, is all you do is you just hold down on this button, which is also your light button. So there you go. Now it's unlocked. I can uh, make adjustments to it, do whatever uh, I want to do with it. Uh, once I get it set where I want it, though, I just press down on that little button again, and the locks comes back up. And no matter what I do, nothing happens. Uh, and the reason I like that is because while I was wearing it, while I would be hiking, a lot of times my trekking pole, I would, you know, my, my hands would shift and stuff, and my trekking poles would make me hit the buttons. So whenever I would go to look at my watch, um, it would be on a completely different screen than what I was anticipating, and I'd have to go back through and get back to where I was. So I really liked that option uh, about this watch or that feature. Uh, another feature that I liked about this is that I could actually set it to read either barometric pressure changes or elevation changes and what it would do is, on my other watch, it read them both at the same time. So what that meant is, I would get to camp at night, my elevation would say, you know, correctly, whatever I was at. Um, however, uh, as barometric pressure changes would occur during the night, I would wake up the next morning, sometimes I'd be higher, sometimes I'd be lower than I started. However, with this watch, I can actually change it to, uh, uh, I can actually lock it in. So what it essentially means is, I can either set it to read any kind of barometric or pressure changes as a barometric reading or as an elevation change. Um, so I can set this thing uh, to read any kind of changes as elevation and that's usually what I keep it on. To be honest I haven't gotten into the whole barometric pressure change thing and um, and I'm not really out enough to to really need to be able to you know possibly rely on that or anything. Uh, most of my trips are you know less than five days so uh, not not really too too worried about the barometric reading on this but what that means is i can set it so that it locks the uh, elevation change in so when i get up the next morning i'm still at the same elevation that i was i uh, start hiking and then it changes uh, because of, of that so i really like that feature uh, over that watch over the other watch because the other watch i couldn't do that um, and really that's the only two features that i you know, I really like this watch for. Now, what is that make it worth? Uh, I paid 150 for the Axio Max, and that was, you know, retail cost. And like I said, these go for 300 bucks. Is that worth twice the price? Um, I don't know. It would have been a tough call. Uh, like I said, I got mine for sale at a heavy discount, the same price I got the Axio Max for. Uh, so I can't say that I'm disappointed. Uh, one other thing I want to point out: this is the uh, negative display 
a lot of people seem not to like that people with poor vision maybe and i understand that for me it's been excellent i've wore this watch pretty much every day uh, this has been my everyday watch uh, since i got it a little over a year ago um, and i've had no problems reading it i haven't ever found myself saying man i wish i would have got the uh you know the the other displays where it's a white or a gray background with black numbers uh, i've been very happy with the black background with the gray gray numbers I, i've had no problems reading it uh worked out pretty well um it has stood up to abuse pretty well better than i thought i was actually thinking this bezel and everything was uh was plastic maybe and it may be but it's pretty tough it's hard to pick it up in the uh the camera here but i've got a lot of scratches all around it i've knocked this thing against trees rocks door frames um, I mean, you name it, I've, I've banged this watch against stuff. Surprisingly, though, uh, the actual um, crystal the, the, or the glass here has not got any scratches on it, so I'm very happy with that. Uh, it's got a, uh, the bezel on it actually rotates, and it's got the two little glow-in-the-dark uh, dots there so that you can you know, have it oriented and know where it's at, if it's dark or anything. Um, as far as the rest of the watch, uh, it's still the same band. Uh, it's holding up just fine. No, no worries or concerns there. It's got two buttons on the left if you're facing it or if you're looking at it. It's got three on the right. Uh, and they each have their own little function, of course. I'm not going to go into the heavy details as far as what each function does. Um, there's other videos out there that, uh, that cover that better than I probably could. I will kind of show you how to navigate it just a little bit, though. Like I said, right now it's locked out. Uh, for everyday home use, um, I will say that when it's locked out, you can still press this button. And if you'll notice below the time, it's changing uh, what else is displayed beneath it. Uh, I usually leave it set on my date because uh, that's typically what I need every day. However, I can change it so that it reads seconds. Um, it can display an alternate time, uh, like if I'm changing time zones or something, which I never really use that. I just change the, the actual time. Um, and then this is sunrise and sunset. I uh, never really use that. You can actually go in and set your uh, your time zone and all that stuff so it reads it. Uh, this is just a, uh, a stopwatch. Um, well, you can tell how much I use it. Well, never mind, it's locked out. That's why I can't actually use it. Um, that's a countdown. You can change that to countdown from whatever time that you want. And then it goes back to blank to leave it off. I will say there's a sleep mode on this watch too. You press all four of these buttons and hold them down and it'll go to sleep and that'll help save your battery. Uh, and going back to the battery, I've had this, like I said, a little over a year and I believe the anticipated um, time frame for the batteries on these is about a year. So it's about right because uh, I actually noticed the, uh, the low battery on there when I got back from my Thanksgiving hike. And I've been wanting to see how long it's going to last. Um, so far it's been since Thanksgiving, uh, it's, it's been showing that. However, I have noticed that some, uh, some functions are starting to, uh, to be affected by that low battery, I believe. Whenever I was on the Thanksgiving hike, I noticed that um, there were, my functions got real, real crazy at night when it was cold. Um, and saying that, I want to say that's my only downfall with this watch. Um, it has a backlight on it, and you can't see it. It's actually on now. All it does is it lights up the numbers, though, um, so that you can see it in, in the dark. Uh, however, I found that within a week of buying this watch and opening it up, I went outside, and the whole point of using this is got a, a thermometer reading on it, or temperature reading. Uh, the, the biggest point I wanted that was because I want to take it off at night and set it next to me so it'll actually read the ambient air temperature rather than, um, you know, the temperature of my arm. Uh, and what I found is that whenever it starts getting around freezing, that backlight just really stops working. Uh, very disappointing in that for a $300 watch not that I paid that um, but I would expect uh, the backlight to work uh, you know to a colder temperature to 32 than 32 degrees so what that means is I actually have to get a light out and flash the light on it to look and see what time it is or what temperature it is or I can put it back inside my sleeping bag or put it back on my watch um, and and you know have that um, so very disappointing in that um, that the, the backlight stops working in cold temperatures. I did contact Sunto about that and they told me to change my battery. And uh, like I said, I don't, I didn't change it then because it was a brand new watch. Uh, and I think it, it, the battery was just fine because like I said, it's been over a year now. Um, but I really don't expect it to form any different with a brand new battery in it now. Uh, so that's just part of that. Anyway, just kind of show you, like I said, I've got it locked so I can unlock it. 
well, there we go. Now, the screen that I typically use it on while I'm hiking, if I press the mode button, it'll go to my next screen. And this is going to display my elevation. Uh, just right above it is going to be my time. And then below it, I usually have my uh, temperature reading. And right now it's saying it's 79 degrees because I'm holding on to it. Um, you can change the same way. You can change what reads on the bottom by using this bottom left button. Uh, it's got a log. Um, this actually tells you how many feet uh, change uh, that, that you... Uh, like if I started at 469 at the end of the day, it tell me how many feet difference um, that, that I am. Don't ever use that. And then my temperature. That's what I usually leave it on. Once I get it there, I'll lock it. And then that's what I hike with it as. I can see what time it is. I can see my elevation and my temperature. Now that temperature, it can be changed still, like I said, when it's locked. Uh, but that's not any concern because while I'm hiking, I'm wearing a watch and that's not going to be right anyway. Uh, but anyway, other than that, uh, there's the compass and I've never used this. Uh, when I bought it, I did try messing around with it to, uh, to set the compass, to calibrate it. I never could get it. Never did get it. And I've heard a lot of other people have had a lot of issues trying to get it with this watch. Um, so, whatever you want to go with that. Um, but anyway, uh, as far as um, going through the different, I'll show you. You're just holding down this mode button and then it's going to come to this. You can uh, set your memory. This right here will select whatever it is. Uh, that you're going to. This is going to be your back out button and then this button up here will actually take you all the way back out no matter where you're at. These are your up and down buttons. This is your enter button. So you can set your time and date. You can actually set your sunrise, your altimeter and barometer settings and that's going to uh, set your reference as well as uh, what you want and I'll show you that. So you can set your reference there and then you can set your profile. And your profile is where you're going to set either altimeter uh, you can actually have a depth meter on this too, but I wouldn't use that. Uh, automatic means it'll change between barometric pressure and altimeter readings on its own. I don't use that setting. Uh, there's the barometer only and the altimeter. And that's what I'm going to use is the altimeter. Um, let's see. And then we have a storm alarm, uh, and that'll read the barometric pressure changes. And if there's uh, a change in it that uh, denotes a storm coming, uh, a little alarm will actually go off on that. So let's go all the way back out of that. Uh, then we've got our compass. That's where you go to calibrate it. Like I said, I didn't have any good luck. Uh, general, that's going to be where you're going to set your button tones, uh, your backlight options. You can make it to where this button only turns your backlight on and off, or any button will turn your backlight on and off. I just leave it set on this button only. Uh, and then, of course, you can change the language. Um, other than that, you can change your units, which is going to be your Celsius and Fahrenheit. Uh, or meters and feet, stuff like that. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Uh, so, that's kind of the functions. That's kind of my thoughts. Uh, I guess I'll say one more time. As far as thoughts, I am happy with the watch. It's been a good watch. I am disappointed that the backlight stops working so easily in cold weather, though. That's a hang-up for me. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. I've got it. I'm glad I've got it. The buttons are nice and big, easy to push. It is... Uh, uh, waterproof down to I think a hundred feet uh, is what it says yeah 100 feet or 30 meters and it used a 20 2032 battery so getting into that uh, the way that you take this off is um, you can see it's got a little slot there and a nickel will fit in that slot um, however I was playing with it just a while ago it is pretty tight it's pretty hard to get off and what I did is I bought this little thing here off of Amazon when I first bought it about a year ago um, it, well, not one a year ago, it was maybe seven months ago. Um, it was listed as being for the Sunto Core and the, um, Vector and a couple other ones. And then this is what it comes with. It's, now it comes in the mail, it says Mosquito Battery Replacement Kit. Um, it comes with a 2032 battery. This little, uh, I guess it's, you know, a, something for the battery. And then it looks like another back cover with an O-ring on it. Um, and I ordered this, it was nine bucks, shipped. So it wasn't too bad. Of course, you can buy the batteries for cheaper than that. And that's probably what I should have done now because I don't think either of these parts are going to work for my watch. But, oh well, I've got it. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and take this battery out and see what all is involved with doing it. Now I've just got a towel laid down to kind of help protect the front of it. And I may have to move the camera because this is going to... What is it? Oh, it's coming off okay. Okay. 
they say not to use a screwdriver. Um, they say to use a coin that's the correct size. And actually a nickel is just a little bit smaller than the size of the slot that's on it. Like I said, this is the first time I've ever actually opened this watch. And then that's what it looks like on the inside. Um, you can see the, well you may not be able to see, but there's a, uh, if I focus, uh, the washer is right around the outside there, and I probably need to take that out and clean it and put it back in there. I may do that, I don't know. Uh, and then there's my battery. Um, so, hang on, let me grab something I didn't do that well. I got my knife here. I use my Sage to, uh, to get that battery out. There we go. That's what it looks like on the inside. And so there's no way for sure that this stuff that came in this replacement kit is going to work. So I just wasted my money <laughs> on a kit that was labeled wrong. But oh well, live you learn. If anybody has a uh, mosquito, a Sunto mosquito and needs extra parts, holler at me. I'll drop them in the mail for you. So, let's see, I've got the battery here. It's 2032. I'm going to take this one away uh, so I don't get it confused with a good one. And I think I am going to, I may regret this, I think I am going to pop this, uh, this out and clean it just a little bit. kind of wipe it off with my fingers and how I saw one guy doing it in a video just kind of get some of the gunk off of it well it is dirty gotta be careful my knife is actually Cutting some of that. So let's go ahead and put this back on before I break anything or lose anything. That actually went on very well. I've got a fossil watch that I've had to replace the battery in a few times and it still ain't working right. So, uh, and that dang band is a headache to get back in. Hmm, maybe this one is too. Okay, I think I've got it back in. There we go. Uh, positive side up. And there's a little bit of a lip there that needs to go in. That just pushes down and then put our battery back on, or back cover back on. And get it closed. Bad thing is now I'm going to have to go back and reset everything. So let's go ahead and get it. Make sure I get it all the way. Tighten back down. That way I form a good seal between the back cover and there we go. Alright, there it is. And as you can see, it's back on. I'm just gonna have to go through all the process of resetting everything. So anyway, guys, um, that is the Sunto Core. Um, I'm I'm happy with it. I'm glad I got it for such a uh discounted price that I did get it for. Um, because like I said, uh, that backlight kind of is aggravating. And I have read other people complain about similar issues whenever it gets down to about the same temperatures also. So I honestly think it's not an issue with the battery. I think it's an issue with uh, the watch. Um, so anyway, uh, this video again, like most of my videos, turned out much longer than I anticipated. Uh, so for those of you that stuck with it and continued watching, I, I appreciate you watching. And if you have any comments or questions, feel free to post them below, and I'll do my best to uh, reply to those comments uh, or answer any questions. And also, um, I will report back if uh, my battery uh, or if my backlight does happen to work better once uh, with this new battery in in cold temperatures. I'm going on a hike coming up, uh, and hopefully I'm afraid that the temperatures are not going to be cold enough. But if they are, uh, I'll see how it does, and I'll report back then. So anyway, guys, I appreciate you watching. Uh, See you next time. Later.